we're going to dig into N8N, uh, and there's going to be 101 automations by the time we're done with this. Uh, it's a very easy to use, powerful automation platform. And it's definitely challenging how much code I write and how I approach a lot of problems. Now you'll know from my channel, I do a lot of stuff around PHP and Laravel. Uh, I even building Laralama, a complete like rag system in PHP that was trying to compete with uh, Langchain. But then I saw this and all the ability to integrate uh, into other systems like Google, Google Calendar, email, uh, HubSpot, just so much out of the box leads me to just want to use this. Um, and so with that, we're going to explore a lot of different use cases, rag systems, data scraping, voice. So you can you pick up a vappy phone and then uh, talk to people from the count, you know, they can look at the calendar. Uh, then just basic automation tasks um, with very little code. Um, so why any and like I said, it's just easy to set up. It's easy to get going. It, the UI is not bad once you get used to it. The documentation is really good. A lot of YouTube videos. And it's not hard to make custom nodes. I mean, it just, I've only hit a few moments where I'm like, okay, I got to get out Laravel and, and do something manual. Um, so by the end of this, you'll really understand how much NAN can do for you. Um, how you can use it to integrate with Laravel or anything as a back-end service, kind of like a serverless ready-to-go system, um, or just use it by itself to do a lot of one-off tasks like checking email and posting messages to Slack. So we're going to dig in now. Um, we're going to look at an install and just look at how to get going. All right, so I had actually a bug, so I'm going to show that as well. So previously, I was showing how you can install it following their docs, which actually works. But what I noticed is that they're working on a new version, and I accidentally downloaded that, so that was 6.6. So I'm just going to emphasize 6.4 for this video. Um, and basically, if you go to their installation docs, just make sure to grab that, because that's the production one. There's some really good stuff in 1.6.6. But it was broken, so I had to roll back a little. So let's go back to my terminal. And so once that's installed, which I already did, um, I'm going to then do the running of it on PX. And we're back to ready to go. All right, so I'm going to open the browser, and you'll get a sign-up page, your name and email, and then you'll log in. You can go into settings and actually set up your license, which is really nice. Um, and it's for free, and it just gives you a few more features um, that they'll talk about when you're getting it. Uh, let me just add this information. Okay. So now that we're in here, you can see in settings, here's where um, the version is. I really wanted to back down. And I think if you look here, uh, see, I, this is the one that I had a bug in. Um, and this is the one, this is probably a safe one. I just didn't uh, think of that one. So, but they're really doing some big advancements and I should read the docs more on this because there was some really cool form stuff, but it didn't do something I needed. So I had to back down. So let's look at where we're at now with this, get a general sense of, um, I need it. And what we'll see is that after we log in, we would typically have just a blank template. So a workflow like this, and this is where you're going to create your workflow. Um, you can have multiple ones on a page. Um, I can show that later on. But let's just do a very basic one where we're going to have a form that triggers uh, and then it talks to an LLM and then it will return back to the person information in the form. Very simple. Templates. So I mean there's a lot of them you can learn from and it's pretty cool because if you go into one, uh, let's see something a little bit simple. Um, Wow, regression testing. This isn't simple, but let's go look for a moment. You can explore it, and you can actually select all of it or download it. Let's see, use it. So we can copy, because in the end, it's just JSON. So if I was to copy that and paste it into a uh, markdown or visual code, that's all it really is. So we can move that over to ours by just pasting in there. <clears throat> but we don't want something that crazy right now, so let's back that out. And what we're going to do is just add a quick starter, a trigger. This is what we can do to trigger it, a manual trigger. Or we want a form trigger, right? So in our case, I'm going to make a form. 
And this form is going to have no authentication. It's going to have a path. We'll call it um, uh, example one. And we're going to give it a title. Um, and then we're going to give it the field. We'll just do one field for now. Um, and we'll give it a text area and we'll give it a placeholder. Nope. And then we'll make it required. Now, when the form is submitted, we'll just say thanks for the submission and, and be done. We want to go all the way to the end and push back some data into it. So we're going to say respond. And then let's get rid of this one we added because we don't need that. And now we're going to add the LLM because I want to just show that. Now it could be anything here. I'm going to just do this guy. And we're not going to make it a chat LLM. Again, if you did do that, you could have a little chat with it and, and kind of test it out. But then you could embed this later on, which is really cool. We're going to get rid of that one. And then we're going to add a model. So again, we're going to keep building on this because it gets pretty amazing where I can now have structured output if I needed it, right? But I don't need that right now, but that would show up there. And then if we use the AI agent, which we're going to do in another video, it would then have tools and we can do voice integrations and just we can trigger other workflows um, in N8N. So now we have our form. We have our LLM. This guy, we're just going to say... Um, you know, here's like the system prompt. And we're going to add a user prompt. And this is the key with um, N8N. So now, like, I want to know what to put there. So I'm going to say execute previous. Now, let's get out of here so we can actually execute it. Let's add our, hold on a moment. Let's do this. Usually you can click test, but we've made this a, a form that um, needs an ending. But I'm going to slow down and say when the form is submitted, or we'll say when the workflow finishes. Let's try this one. When I test this, we get our form. Now this form would be just a URL somewhere, and we're going to see that in the end of this. So we're going to send test, and then we have this data now that it's showing us along the way, and I can pin it so I don't have to keep hitting that a node. And then in here, I can say, oh yeah, here's that data from that form field. I'm going to just put it here. So now we're passing data from node to node, and it even gets better because it's going to save all the different nodes. So you can take data from different parts of the process. So now I want the output to go back to the form. So this is the, the more interesting part. So let's set that to that. And then we're going to set that to a where do they put this guy? Let's see. Respond to webhook. <clears throat> so we don't want the first incoming one. We want some text. And that text is going to be from this guy. So I'm going to go grab some HTML I had, ChatGPT or Cloud Make. Um, it is right here. And I'm going to throw that in there. Let's close that. And we're going to say, okay, respond with text. And we just dump that in there. And I'm going to go grab, I'm going to set it to expression. And you'll see what that means in a moment. And we're going to open up this window so we can have a better view. And then we're going to go see what came in from our form. Uh, but we actually want to know what came in from our LLM. And you'll see why in a moment. So let's close this, test it. And now we have our LLM text. And what we want to do is just, ah, that UI doesn't let me. So let's just do this. We're going to drag that here. We're going to just say, this is nice. You can just drag it over. And now we can see that it's going to be, and this is a really nice interface once you get used to it. We see it outputs the JSON. And we're going to learn how to do a lot with this later on. But right now we're just focusing on this step, this intro. It's actually kind of hard for an intro to be fair, but I just want to show how quick and easy it is to set up a form. <clears throat> so in this case, and, and let's do something really quick after that shows you how much, how powerful this really is. Um, in this case, the um, we have a form, we have a response. We're pretty much done. If I was to run this as a test, 
Um, let's click save, by the way. Nothing that matters. It's going to ask me to unpin my test data. And so now we're going to say hello. And that's the one thing. Just keep an eye on your pins because you might just get results, but they're not what you're hoping for because it was all pinned. So let's go back to this and click save. Now what we're going to do is go to the production URL for a moment. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to click on it. Oops, sorry. If you get this message, make sure to turn it on. Okay. And now we can say hello. And because Grok is so fast, uh, Grok with a Q, um, it responded that quickly. So that's it. So we were able to push this back as a web page with HTML um, into a format and then, you know, put that data there. So let's just take this quickly a step further just so you can see how easy this is. So I'm going to add a form field. Um, let's do this. So we're going to use the same idea. We're going to say, okay. Actually, let's do this. Uh, and um, the person doesn't need to say anything, so. Uh, And I, this won't be my real list because it's too embarrassing. Uh, we're going to require it. And we'll say XLS because I'm not sure what they're going to give me. Uh, actually, we'll just do CSV in the end. So then we're going to say save. And then this guy needs a new system prompt. Uh, uh, there's no more form fields. Say hello. And let's go look at that because this stuff adds up too, like naming things, right? Um, and this field has a field label, so I could say, um, you know, it's going to show up over there as that, right? It was add this to here. There's no need to parse it. It's going to do it for you. Now, I'll show you the other stuff later with JSON because you can see what can happen, but that was it. Now we get this nice output to show what was in there, but now let's give it to the LLM. So if there's nothing pinned, um, so let's see, let me see if I can pin this. No, I can't because it's the binary. So let's just test the flow. So let's go to my templates and then just grab that. And give it a moment. Actually, Grok is usually pretty fast, so I'm surprised it's taking so long. And Grok isn't always the best at formatting, but, um, you know, not bad. Just curious what I was buying, but it was fake data. All right, so there we go. So we see how easy it is to do the form. We can save it, and then we can go to production. And as long as it's active, we can go, you know, there. We don't even have to be logged in. Uh, let's do the private mode. And here we are as a user. Now you could, I think, change this template. That would be interesting to look up. But now I can grab the file. And as a user, just using my site, it could have basic auth. It could have other auth. You could change the domain name, put it behind Nginx. But in a moment, you get results. So <clears throat> nice way to just kind of prove ideas. This is the first look at NNN, getting a sense of start and end. Very simple LLM, but we're going to hit AI agents before long. And just things you can do with it. The form is the coolest one, I think. We will be hitting a lot of these. This is just the intro video. There's 101 I'm going to do. I'm going to count this as one so you can see how to process a form using the LLM, uh, process some data. So, but we'll go down a long list. Please click on the link below to get on the, the notice list so you get a notice every time we release or subscribe. And just, you know, more will come and, and leave some feedback if you want to hear about any type of automation that you're thinking about. All right, that's it.